This screencast is um, on titrations, and so it's uh, going to cover strong acid, strong base titrations, as well as um, strong acid and weak base, or weak base and strong acid titrations. So what we want to talk about first is just some of the vocabulary that you need to be familiar with for um, acid-base titrations. First of all, a titration is a procedure that's commonly used to determine the amount of an acid or a base in a solution. And typically, you are going to be titrating a known concentration with an unknown concentration. You can also apply titrations to redox reactions. It involves a solution of known concentration, and we call that the titrant and it's delivered from a burette into an unknown solution, unknown concentration, and that is called the analyte. The analyte, root word there is where you get the word analyze, you are analyzing it, you're trying to determine its concentration because you don't know it. And you run your titration until it is just consumed, and that's when you'll have a color change occur. There will also be a indicator present that would be sensitive to pH when you do an um, acid-base titration. Now when the color change occurs, that's what we call the equivalence point. It's always signaled by a color change of the indicator. That's the point that you would stop your titration. Once you um, get your equivalence point, it is sometimes helpful to continue the titration, measuring the pH or monitoring the pH um, for several more milliliters of the addition of the titrant so that you can get you a nice pH curve or a titration curve. So you can plot the pH or the titration curve in order to monitor the progress of your acid-base reaction or if it was a redox reaction to monitor the progress of the redox reaction. All right, the equivalence point. The equivalence point is the point in the titration when just enough titrant has been added to react exactly with the substance titrated. Just enough titrant has been added that reacts exactly with the substance being titrated that's when the color change occurs. The end point in your titration is the point in the titration where the indicator changes color. Now one thing that's, that you need to understand that happens at your equivalence point, that's when the, the number of moles of the analyte equals the number of moles of the titrant and that's going to be significant for you to understand is when the mole to mole ratio um, is the same. Alright, once you run your titration you then can plot a pH curve or a titration curve. A pH curve is the plot of pH and pH is always plotted on your y-axis versus volume of the titrant added and that's always titrated or plotted on your x-axis. And we use the pH curve to monitor the progress of an acid-base or redox titration. But we are talking specifically about acid-base titrations here, so obviously this is going to be dealing with acid-base titrations. Now, how do you perform the titration calculations? Well, what you need to understand first of all is there are very small volumes of acid or base being titrated. So um, in the animation that I showed you um, from the YouTube clip, you notice that the burette, the long slender piece of glassware, it's marked in milliliters, very tiny volume of the titrant. That's what's in the burette. So since we're dealing with milliliters, rather than liters, we are going to be using a variation of molarity. Now remember molarity is moles per liter, um, but we're going to use the variation of that to simplify our calculations. 
So instead of using mole per liter, we express it in millimoles per milliliter. Now, the, as far as that goes, a mole per liter is equivalent to millimoles per milliliter. If you take a look here, if think about dimensional analysis, the milli part would technically cancel if you were trying to get it to cancel. So since we know that one millimole is one times 10 to the negative three moles, one milliliter is one times 10 to the negative three liters. If we want to find the molarity, I'm sorry, if we want to find the moles or the millimoles of our titrant and our analyte, we can just use the molarity formula, understanding that molarity is equal to moles per liter and molarity is equal to millimoles per milliliter. And so that means that if we wanted to find the volume um, of the, well, we, we're going to be given the volume, but if we wanted to find the millimoles of our titra and our analyte, what you would do is rearrange this formula. And so if we take a look at moles divided by liters, or as I said, millimole divided by milliliter, that's equal to molarity. We're going to try to be determining our millimoles. So in order to rearrange this equation, what we have to do is cross multiply here. So that's going to give us molarity times milliliters is equal to millimoles or molarity times the volume equals millimoles. So keep this in mind for the calculations that we do. Now a strong acid strong base titration in order to find the hydrogen ion concentration at a given point in the titration you want to first determine the millimoles of the hydrogen ions present. Remember, we're trying to determine the pH because we're going to plot a pH curve. So the first thing you want to do is determine the millimoles of the hydrogen ion present at the given point in the titration. So you do that by using the formula we just talked about on the last slide. Molarity times volume is going to equal to your millimoles. Once you, do, once you get your millimoles determined, then you're going to divide the hydrogen ion concentration by the total volume. I'm going to call that V total or V sub T in the problems that we do. And when you divide your millimoles by your milliliters in the total volume, that's going to give us our new hydrogen concentration in the Erlenmeyer flask or in the beaker. Once you have your new hydrogen ion co concentration, you can then handle the equilibrium problem and calculate your pH like we learned um, to when we talked about finding the pH of an acid or base solution. What you want to keep in mind when it's a strong acid, strong base titration, remember that the net ionic equation for any strong acid, strong base titration is always the auto ionization of water. Um, so if you have forgotten about that because it's been a little bit, let me just give you a common example and this will go right along with the example we're going to be doing um, in our examples in just a few minutes in the next part of the video. So the strong acid that we're going to use, remember you got to remember who the six pack of acids are, we're going to be seeing nitric acid used and we're also going to be titrating it with sodium hydroxide going to titrate it with sodium hydroxide. Now both of these are strong, strong acid, strong base. So remember when you do your, when you write your uh, complete ionic equation, um, what's going to happen is you're going to double replace this. You're going to form H2O liquid and then NaNO3. Now remember, sodium nitrate is a soluble salt, so this is going to be aqueous. This water is always a liquid. Of course, a strong base is always aqueous, and a strong acid is always aqueous. So when you do your complete ionic equation, you end up with H plus, plus NO3 minus, plus Na plus, 
plus OH minus because remember all aqueous substances will end up dissociating 100% um, in water. The water remains intact, H2O. And then since this is a soluble salt, sodium ion plus the nitrate ion. Now this is not something, um, this is not something you're going to have to do every time. I'm just trying to remind you of how we get this net ionic equation and just take my word for it. Any strong acid, strong base titration, you will always use the same net ionic equation because let's eliminate our spectators and you will see nitrate cancels with nitrate, sodium cancels with sodium. So what we have left is hydrogen ion plus hydroxide ion in equilibrium with water. So if you read your problem and it says strong acid, strong base titration, you will always use your net ionic equation, H plus plus OH minus is in equilibrium with water, and you would handle the calculations from there. Now in the next video, we're going to be running through an example of a strong acid, strong base titration, similar to the one I just talked about. So um, one thing that I do want to just explain in a titration, this is your burette. So in the burette, you would contain your um, titrant. And then the substance you're trying to analyze is going to be in your Erlenmeyer flask or the beaker. This is your analyte. <clears throat> And the stopcock, when you turn it, it allows the sodium hydroxide to mix with the acid that's going to be in the container here. So in the Erlenmeyer flask, we're going to have nitric acid. In the burette, we're going to have sodium hydroxide. Notice sodium hydroxide is a strong base. Nitric acid is a strong acid. So in our examples that we're going to do next, we're going to be using the net ionic equation, H+. Plus plus OH minus and equilibrium with H2O as our net ionic equation when we do our equilibrium calculation. But one thing you always want to do is you want to figure out the millimoles in the beaker and the millimoles in the burette. And then during the titration you have to each time calculate your V total. Now one thing that this problem is going to kind of keep consistent is whatever's in the beaker down here is going to be the same volume in there each time and you're adding to it from the titrant. So notice it tells us that we have 50 milliliters of 0.2 molar HNO3. So if we look at that, the volume of the HNO3 down here is 50 milliliters and we have 0.2 molar of it. So we're going to find the molarity times volume to get the millimoles of the acid. And in this case, the acid is the hydrogen ion because it's a strong acid. So let's go ahead and do that. That'll set us up for the next part of the calculation. So the molarity is 0.200 molar. The volume is 50.0 milliliters. And when you multiply 0.200 times 50, that's going to give us 10.0 millimoles of H+. Plus. So remember that for when we do our titration calculations because they're typically multi-step, multiple parts. All right, so now let's do the same thing and we're just going to figure out on the next part, we're going to figure out how much how many millimoles of the base we're adding and you have to recalculate that each time because in the titration you're going to be adding the base what's in the burette to the acid what's in the flask. So as you add it the V total you're going to always have to recalculate your V total so we can't do that right now because we haven't seen the rest of the problem always find that. You're going to always take molarity times volume of your titrant to get your millimoles of your titrant and then you will proceed with the calculations. So I'm going to conclude this video and in the next video we'll pick up with this problem.